Aloha. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. My wife, Cindy, just walked out the door. She's grabbing her surfboard. She's going to go out and uh, surf uh, right out here in front of our house in Waikiki Beach. And, uh, and I'm here on the radio. Why would I choose to be here on the radio instead of uh, going out surfing? Because I got a good friend of mine, longtime friend, a man I really respect, and that is Bill Snyder. And Bill is here today. We're going to talk about this, a new movie he's uh, just produced called uh, About the Shroud of Turin. So we'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak adventure. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of manly spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. Zoop up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I had this very unique experience uh, a few years ago. My wife Cindy and I traveled to the Holy Lands. Uh, we got to um, go to Tel Aviv first. It was the day after Christmas, and there was a Christmas swell. So all the people in Israel must have been good boys and girls because it sent waves. Cindy and I actually got to go tandem surf, uh, do, do lifts, uh, surfing waves in Tel Aviv. It's probably the coolest thing I've ever done. Uh, and then we went on a, on a, a, a pilgrimage with Father Don Calloway. And when we got up to Jerusalem, we stayed in a hotel that had a, a special area off to the side. Of, it was like a, uh, like a miniature museum, I guess. And there are two statues in the world that are based on the Shroud of Turin. One is white, and then this other one, the one that was there, it's a life-size sculpture based on the actual sh the Shroud of Turin, so the actual kind of dimensions and wounds and all that is seen there. And this one was more of a, in a brass color, I would say. And when you walked in, you saw Jesus, the sculpture of Jesus laying down. It just sent shockwaves through you because the wounds uh, that you know so well were there, but just so more, just so graphic. Uh, you saw a man that was... Um, I would say also strong. You know, he was a technon. He was a builder. He probably worked a lot with rock because that's what they build, build things with in Israel. They don't have very many trees, and uh, and it just it just you, you saw you you just were humbled to say, uh, Jesus, thank you for what you did. You're, I'm here in the Holy Lands. I've been in the tomb. I've been to the cross, and now here you are, and uh, and it it just it just rivets your soul the price that Jesus paid so that we, he could raise our dignity to be the children of God, to be uh, born again and to be raised up uh, as the children of God. And so Bill Snyder's with me. Bill Snyder, aloha, Bill. Aloha, Bear. It's always awesome to share the airwaves with you. Hey, sharing the airwaves. Let's go surf some waves. Um, yeah. But Bill, uh, gosh, we go way back, Bill. I think, well, 10 years or something like that. Yeah. We've, you've been so helpful in my own ministry. And you even went on a shoot with us and did our, did our sound with us for our TV show, Long Ride Home. And then I think you had to run off on the last day. Who, who does this? On the last day of the shoot, he, shoot, he skips out early. Yeah, I what did. Was, what was that about? I got married like two days after uh, your <laughs> your uh, shoot so so i needed to get home back to my fiance now my wife i uh, got a beautiful son elvin and yeah it's it, life is good so yeah i remember you headed out you had i think your in-laws were flying and you had to pick them up yep so uh, yep. What, what what was more uh i would say you know weddings are wonderful but they also can be kind of grueling too what was yeah. what was more of uh shall we say challenging shooting long ride home or the three days or whatever the the whole wedding uh, <laughs> thing that was going on there oh my gosh uh it might be a tie bear but i would but i would but i would say probably the wedding was more stressful than yeah the, really the long ride home. <laughs> oh, absolutely <laughs> oh so so let's ask your wife what, what was more stressful or will that, okay we'll just ask you from your perspective wedding day long ride home or the day your baby was born the the whole the whole uh, labor oh. and all of that the labor was 31 hours for my mm, wife, so mm. I, I think that takes the cake. Yeah, yeah, okay. Well, we'll give her some credit. Oh, amazing. Yeah. Some beautiful job. Yeah. I'm so happy when I saw your wedding pictures and then I saw the baby, the baby uh, 
when the baby was born, what, like almost right away you got pregnant, I think within the first six months or so. Um, yeah, well, yes, we did. We had one miscarriage, and then after that, I'm uh, sorry. We, yeah, uh, but no, it's all good. We had one miscarriage, and then right after that happened, God graced us with Elvin Francisco, and he is uh, strong and healthy. He was born on Cinco de Mayo. Oh, of well done. 2021. Yeah. So, and I know you're. Uh, I know you're a Viva yeah. Cristo Rey guy too, right? Aren't you? Um, don't, aren't, I, I yeah. think right. Yeah, yeah you're into the uh, uh, the uh, the Cristeros down there in Mexico. Absolutely. Um, so then you have two babies. You have one in heaven and one here with you on earth. Yes, we do. Yeah. So now, so out of the blue, I think it was just yesterday you said, hey, I've got this new film that's just about to come out. I know you've been telling me about it, but it's about ready to come out. Uh, do, you, do, you, do you think you'd like to interview me? And I go, you got time tomorrow? So, <laughs> yeah, <that's right. laughs> so uh, tell us about the, this new project and uh, just how it hap- came to be, and then we're going to get into it. Yeah, absolutely. So... Uh, one of my good friends, Kent Kahalski, he is the founder and president of Fiat Ministry Network. And uh, he had a connection with a gentleman by the name of Brian Walsh. Brian is the uh, one of the experts on the Shroud of Turin, uh, executive director of the Shroud of Turin Center based in Richmond, Virginia. And he had been doing some work with uh, Brian, just kind of cataloging his his work with video recordings over zoom and you know there's amazing technology over zoom he was just kind of sharing all about the shroud you know on these video shows uh, with kent and i said well you know kent how about we do a documentary like you know a, a film on this would brian be open to that you know instead of just having a single camera like shoot you know or whatever over zoom these discussions and so kent reached out he said Brian, what do you think about this? And we jumped on a, a conference call, and all of a sudden, we've got this documentary going. And so that's really how it started. It started with this little seed uh, from from Brian, uh, who really wants to catalog his work because he's getting older and older, and he's spent decades uh, researching the shroud. And I think that so many there are so many researchers out there that have been looking at this since in the 1970s, uh, when the Sturk project was done, that they just really want to have their information catalog before before they you know meet our meet our Lord. And there's so much uh, new information. You know, I was expo- really my. F- I mean, I've of course heard about the shroud for many years. Um, my first ex- uh, real going into deep was at the Napa San- Napa uh, conference maybe four years ago, and Father Spitzer was there. And uh, he gave a full hour presentation on the shroud, and I go, oh my gosh, there's 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 no doubt. And then a year later, I believe it was, I went I went to uh, Israel and saw it. Tell us a little bit about the history of of the shroud. You know wh- what we know about its 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 movements, its history. What what is the shroud? Maybe people don't even know what we're talking about. What is the shroud? Yeah, so the shroud is the supposed burial cloth of Jesus Christ. Um, is is how I like to you know sum that up, but. Um, what, how, you know, the history of it really, and, and there's another expert in our film, his name is Richard Bernacci, and Richard travels the country sharing about the Shroud, him and his wife travel the country, uh, faith-based communications, had opportunity to actually interview him in Milwaukee, but um, when the, uh, when in the film he talks about that the Shroud, you know, we cannot actually put a uh, you know, a, a a definite on the the shroud's whereabouts for the first 1,300 years of the shroud's existence, because we just don't know uh, based on all the conflicting you know reports of you know. Yeah, it's not like things. there was a there was a YouTube video on it back in 33 A.D. Exactly, okay. exactly. But uh, there's there's some pretty cool story surrounding it um, with obviously miraculous interventions, you know, of of just oral tradition that has been passed through mm-hmm. the ages on mm-hmm. this, right? Um, I'm, one of my favorites is that it was buried in a wall mm-hmm. uh, by a bishop because he feared that it would be discovered. So he buried the wall, he dies, and the next uh, person around the year 500, uh, it, 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 you know, it becomes revealed because guess what? Uh, we, uh, somebody believed that the Blessed Mother appeared to them, a bishop, uh, Bishop Eulalius, the Blessed Mother, appears here and says, "Hey, you're trying to defeat a Persian army. Pull this, pull this thing out of the wall, 
well, where is it? <laughs> it's buried in this wall. They pull it out. They parade it before the Persian army. The Persian army uh, falls to be- pieces. They build a church uh, based mm. around this. So, I mean, again. About what, about what year was that? 500. The year oh, about, 500. About so that, okay. 500. So we're talking with Bill Snyder. He's the he's uh, the filmmaker for a, a new film. And what is the name of the film, Bill? Who Do You Say I Am? Oh, that's so cool. And where, where's it going to show? How are people going to be able to see it? So they're going to be able to get it on cmax.tv, which is uh, like the Catholic Netflix. Uh, mm-hmm. They're an amazing organization. And then we're hoping that parishes are going to pick it up and be able to show it in their parish uh, to groups. And we can talk a little bit about how people can bring it to their uh, to, to their parish later and on. And where can people find you? Uh, very simply, patchworkheart.org. Yeah, I love that. There's a great story behind all of that, but we won't get have time to talk about it today. This is Bear Wozniak. Uh, we invite you to go to our website, deepadventure.com, and subscribe to our weekly newsletter. If you do, you'll get in the morning before the Saturday night show airs uh, a, a link with a video version of the show because we do we we send this out on all the podcast apps and it's all and it's on video and we also post it to YouTube. So we invite you to go to deepadventure.com sub- subscribe to our weekly newsletter because you get that and a lot of other things with the newsletter each week. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak adventure. Now you can journey with other men on the adventure of a lifetime, growing in manly virtue through Bear's Man Cave community in our three-year school of manliness. Join at deepadventure.com. Better yet, you can lead your own sons through the same compelling video, audio, and written content. Can you imagine how much deeper your relationship with your dad could have been and how much more you could have learned and pitfalls you might have avoided if your dad had a tool like this to help to draw you both into a deeper, life-changing discussion. Now you have a trigger that you can pull that will take you into gritty discussions with other men and with your sons at deepadventure.com. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link, or go to notredamefcu.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. You can gain traction in the virtues in my book, Deep Adventure, The Way of Heroic Virtue. And you can be inspired by my personal testimony of heartache and triumph with my book, A Surfing Guide to the Soul, both newly published by Sophia and available at our web store, deepadventure.com and also on amazon.com. This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak Adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Our guest today is Bill Snyder. He's a longtime friend of mine. Uh, someone that, the one thing I say about Bill is he is faithful. He's a faithful man of God. He, he You know, there's a, in my new book, uh, Where Have All the Cowboys Gone? 12 Rules for Manliness. One of the things I say is, is get the job done. That's one thing I know about Bill Snyder. He gets the job done <laughs> no matter what area of his life. He's, he's a faithful servant of the Lord. And they, he has a new film called uh, Who Am I? About the Who Do You Say That I Am? Uh, about the Shroud of Turin. So the Shroud of Turin is, the burial, is, is, is believed to be the burial cloth of Jesus. It's a burial cloth that goes, uh, starts uh, you know, underneath him while he's laying on his back. And then I believe does it go over his head and then back to his feet? Yes. And, in the, and in the shroud, when you see the shroud... Uh, the first person that really got to study this was someone in the 1800s when photography uh, first took place. Can you tell us about that? 
Yeah, so uh, that's in the film as well. We uh, we talk a little bit about the first time it was photographed uh, in, in in the late 1800s, and it's it's pretty impressive mm -hmm. what uh, what people see because the the shroud is actually a negative image. Like when you in in the old days of uh, of film, when you would hold up that film strip you would see kind of this weird negative film negative image everything was reversed like everything was reversed Every, exactly. the black the yeah. black colors were white and the white colors were black yeah exactly and so when when you look at the shroud it actually is a negative image on the on the shroud when you develop it it becomes a positive image so when and, he took when he took the picture and he looked at his negatives it must have looked like positives because it, it was it, it reversed itself exactly exactly uh exactly what happened and so the the famous image that you see of the shroud is actually that negative image because it looks like the face of jesus it looks like you're looking at a black and white picture of of yes of, 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 of a person so when people think of the shroud they think oh that's the shroud no, that's actually the negative image, which is a positive image of the man on the shroud. Uh, so, the the shroud is white or you know cream colored. And so and so there, you know, then time goes by, and this there was this work that was done uh, in the seventies. Uh, I believe it was carbon dating, but p part of the story of the shroud is that at some point um, it experienced a fire. There was a fire in, in the church where it was. And I forget who the nuns were, but the nuns tried to repair that shroud. They did a wonderful job of repairing that shroud. But, of course, it, they used material that wasn't part of the original shroud to take care of the part that was burned. And that was the part that the people that did the carbon dating used. And how many samples did they take? So, um, Or just tell us actually, about that. Yeah, 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 absolutely. So the the... The, sh the shroud was carbon dated in 1988, uh, about 10 years after the initial Sturt project. So the okay. carbon dating uh, yes, was I see. Okay. 1988, yes. uh -huh. um, and the it was flawed in many different parts. Uh, but actually, Brian uh, Brian Walsh, who's one of the experts in the film, just released a brand new study on the on the carbon dating and the inaccuracies of it in a, in a journal, in an academic journal, in 2020 with his friend Larry Schwalbe. Um, and so Brian can really speak to this, uh, and he does so in the film, uh, about about how and why the carbon dating is so far off. Um, but but basically, they took uh, a sample from below the man's feet, and it was the worst possible sample uh, sampling spot that you could have sampled from. There were all kinds of contaminants uh, that were taken, uh, you know, that were on this piece. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. In addition to that, uh, there was a portion of the shroud. Uh, the, the sample wasn't large enough for one of the um, one of the places to study it, so they had to cut another piece, uh, smaller piece of this strip off, and give it to uh, the Arizona lab. So there's there's all kinds of issues with the carbon dating. And then, uh, as he explains in the film, the the mathematics. It, when when they studied this, it's like they're in a trend line, you know, going you know going from or latest to to earliest or whatever, right? Like all along this line, that and he goes that shouldn't happen. They you know if this is a random sample, it it shouldn't look like a trend line on on a on, on a uh, you know graph. So this is just totally flawed, and. Uh, Sadly, there's really no way to redo the carbon dating because the shroud was cleaned in 2002. And because of all the cleaning of the shroud and, you know, whatever happened to it, that that kind of went out the but window. But there's so many so much great science that has been done. I think one of the things that's interesting to me is that when they sample the shroud, they first of all they don't find any dye or any chemicals that could have created that. Uh, but what they do find is they do find, um, for example, um, I believe pollen. Yeah. That is very unique pollen and existed in Israel at that time, but I don't think even exists today. It's very rare pollen. They also found, um, one of the things I find so fascinating, Bill, too, is I believe they found in the blood that is there, Jesus' blood that is there, it's AB blood, 
which is very rare, but it's a form of blood that you can give to anyone. If you need, someone needs a transfusion, someone with AB blood can give to anyone. And it just so happens that that's the very type of blood that we find in all of the Eucharistic, the Eucharistic miracles over time. They all, when they, those Eucharistic miracles where the hostess become uh, flesh or where there's, or where the, it, there's, there's blood, it's AB blood. So that the AB blood in the host, Eucharist matches the AB is the same sort of blood that we find on in the shroud from Jesus' wounds. Yeah, and you know, um, the other really interesting thing, Brian touches on that in the film, and he he talks about the spiritual significance of AB. Mm. Because AB is a universal receiver. You can accept blood from anyone. Mm. What did Jesus do? He took on every person's sin in the mm. entire world. Mm, I see. So there's such a spiritual significance to the fact that his blood type is AB because he can take blood, he can take that uh, you know, sin on from anyone. And um, yeah, so we talk about that. I mean, uh, these experts in the shroud were just fascinating. I got a chance to spend like five hours talking to both of these uh, two, you know, these two experts on the shroud. It just was life changing. Well, what do what do they say? Uh, there's one one per, there's there is this. The only logical explanation that can people can come up with, I believe, is that it's a result of a very powerful radiation light, a flash of light. Yes. What what, what do we, what do we know about that? Yeah. So, uh, Since it's Richard's not dye. It's not chemicals. It's something. No. What what caused it? So, it's the outer piece of each fiber is tinted in a in a color. Like and the only way to replicate that is to fire, uh, like I don't know how many million, six million watts of energy at a you know for one bi- uh, for one billionth of a second, or, or yeah yeah one billionth of a second. And what happens is that fiber changes color, but they can't create a picture. So you multiply that out, and they and they say it would take the amount of energy it would take to create the full image and, you know, to be able to be an artist and actually do this would be the amount of energy of 11 AT&T stadiums, which is the stadium the Dallas Cowboys play in, 11 of them running at peak power consumption for 12 billionths of a second. Like, it's it, it's Boom. miraculous. Yeah. Boom. You know, how are you going to recreate that? There's... Uh, as Richard says, what they did with eczema lasers to one piece of fiber, you know, they would have to do to an entire shot. And oh, by the way, create an oh. image. Right. It would have to be. So that's just for for one slice of part of the shroud. But to do that for the whole shroud, and leave this perfect image. We're talking yeah. with Bill Snyder. Bill, uh, where can? What's the name of the film again? Who do you say I am? <laughs> and uh, where can people f- find you? Very simply, patchworkheart.org. Hey, Bill, do you know we have this thing called School of Manliness? We're really excited about it. It uh, can be found at deepadventure.com. Men uh, join our man cave, and then we, meet, we, we uh, have a curriculum, a three-year curriculum there for men to go through. That's video, it's audio, it's written content, and the men go through the kind of like a, every month a new one of the manly areas that we're talking about. For example, one of them is Be Dangerous, is one of the ones we're talking about soon. Uh, another one is uh, how a man treats a woman, defines him. And so we go into depth in each of those areas once a month. The men go through themselves, but then once a month we have a Zoom call. But what is really cool about it is th- the young men, like boys that are maybe confirmation age and above, we can give them a sign-on also. They don't get to be part of the man cave where all the men talk, but they get to be part of their dad's man cave where the, the son can go through this exact same curriculum, have his, his own log on. And, and go through it with his father, and then they can have a conversation with him. So we invite people to go to our website, deepadventure.com, and consider joining uh, the School of Manliness. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. This is Daniel the Boone Markham with another episode of Country Up. Dreamers. The British warrior Lawrence of Arabia once wrote, All men dream, but not equally. Those who dream by night in the dusty recesses of their minds wake in the day to find that it was vanity. But the dreamers of the day, 
They are dangerous men, for they may act on their dreams with open eyes to make them possible. Christian history is sprinkled with triumphant visionary dreamers of the day, like the Dr. Martin Luther King. Coretta Scott King wrote of her husband, If you give your life to a cause in which you believe, and if it is right and just, and if your life comes to an end as a result of this, then your life could not have been spent in a more redemptive way. I think that's what my husband has done. Now, Jesus, the ultimate dream maker, had a vision of the kingdom of God, which is described in the Sermon on the Mount. He saw it. He explained it in detail throughout the Gospels. He constantly talked about it. He lived it. He modeled it. He launched it into our darkened world. He willingly gave the ultimate sacrifice for it. Jesus didn't command us just to preach the gospel. He exhorted us to preach and live the gospel of the kingdom. Jesus has a hankering for you and me to catch his kingdom dream, a vision of how the world should be, as a prophet Amos wrote, where justice rolls like a river. Jesus is the architect, and we are his contractors. So grab your nail belt and get busy building. This is Daniel the Boone Markham at countryup.org on a journey a few miles this side of heaven. We invite our mama bears to join with us at deepadventure.com. You'll have access to all of the Long Ride Home TV shows even before they air on EWTN. Plus, three years of the shareable Ocean Sunrise daily catechism videos. Plus, at deepadventure.com, a 20% discount at our online store with all of our great t-shirts and clothes and books and rosaries and medals and all kinds of accessories. You'll also get an autographed copy of Bear's latest book, And for a limited time, a Catholic biker stuffed teddy bear. All at deepadventure.com. Come on, Mama Bears, let's hear you roar. Did you know that each Saturday morning you can receive the shareable YouTube video version of the Bear Wozniak Adventure in our inspiring weekly newsletter, even before it airs on the radio or hits the podcast apps. Never miss another episode. You can even binge watch Bear's inspiring guests. Think about the impact you can have sharing these videos with your friends. Go to deepadventure.com and click the subscribe button. Be the kind of man that when he gets out of bed in the morning, the devil says, oh no, he's up. Go to deepadventure.com and invite Bear to speak. Aloha, this is Bear Wozniak. Welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Our TV show, Long Ride Home, is uh, being aired on EWTN, and also you can find it on Prime Video. Season 1, Season 2, and Season 3 are all up on on, Prime. Prime Video and season four, which is the uh, the the season that we filmed in Hawaii. I think we're going to end up with twelve episodes. We're just very close to delivering that to EWTN. They expect to start airing it in the spring. So uh, we appreciate your your donations towards that because we uh, we need all the help we can get to to provide that kind of uh, product to you and to the network. So you can do you can donate to us too at DeepAdventure.com. We've got Bill Snyder with us here. His project. Is, what is the name of the project again, Bill? Who do you say I am? And and uh, it's about the Shroud of Turin. But Bill, your your ministry, patchworkheart.org, what is the name of your podcast? Yeah, so you can uh, listen to myself and my good friend Ann DeSantis. We have a show called Sewing. Uh, we base that on Sewing Hope into Broken Hearts, uh, S-E-W-I-N-G. And you can hear that on... Uh, my you on my YouTube channel as well, which is very simply Patchwork Heart Ministry. They they can find it in all the podcast apps. Yep, it's all. And, there, what, yeah. and what is the name again, Bill? Uh, Sewing Hope. Sewing Hope. Yeah, I'm so proud of Bill. He does such a great work. Does such a great work. You know, uh, I was thinking about this at one point uh, about nuclear energy, about fission and fusion. And now lately, there's this big thing about fusion energy that's just come out. Fission is when you take the smallest little particle and you split it in half, and great, great power is released. A fusion is when you take a small particle and you fuse them together, 
and tremendous power is released. And I was thinking about that. When you take the smallest little thing in the world and you split it, it's explosive power. Well, what if you took the greatest, the greatest thing in the world, the greatest being in the world? When Jesus died on, this, on the cross and his soul was separated from his body, you know, his body was always, always joined to him as, as in his divinity as well as his soul, but his soul and his body were separated. They were split apart. That's the definition of death. Something powerful happened. In that, in that moment of fission, a great blast of, po- uh, of forgiveness uh, was released cosmically from the beginning of time to the end of time. Tremendously powerful, beautiful, um, uh, the, power, the power of the cross. Then, a few days later, f- uh, fusion took place when his body and soul were reunited. And another great powerful thing was released, and that was our ability to be born again and, and to have this live in the resurrection power and glory of Jesus Christ. And when you think about that, when you look at the Shroud of Turin, which Bill has a new film out called Who Do You Say That I Am? Uh, when you think about that, you are saying how powerful the energy had to be. Like it's a beam of light of some sort, like an ultraviolet light. Say again, what would it take to form that image on that on that? Shroud. Yeah, but 11 si- mm-hmm. AT&T stadiums, that big stadium the Dallas Cowboys play in, 11 of them running at peak power consumption. That means every single outlet has an iPhone plugged into it or something. Every, every outlet, 11 AT&T stadiums running for one billionth of a second. And how much would that create, the whole shroud or just a small part of it? I would create the whole shroud, but it would be wow. 11, 11 stadiums. So think about the power. <laughs> think about the power that it took to create that shroud. Think about the power of God's love that was released at the moment of that resurrection. So tell, tell us more about, about the shroud. What, what more scientific evidence is there that it's, it is? Uh, what, what about the wounds? Do the wounds match what is in Scripture? Yeah, or, Absolutely. Uh, they, you know, and, and Brian is so articulate. Brian Walsh is amazingly articulate at going through this in the film. There is so much to it. But the, the point that sticks out to me that when I, when I watch this as I edit the film, right, like you know, I, get, I get the opportunity not only to talk to these guys, but then I get the chance to edit all of the footage that we have. Mm-hmm. And so as I sit there and I edit this and I continually listen to it, I, I, I've probably watched this film 30 times already, right? But the, and one of the things that sticks out about Jesus is crucifixion to me is is about the is about the wounds in his hands mm. and 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 all this the, the scientific evidence the scientific evidence and just the the science that the Roman soldiers went through to make sure that the crucified person would hang on the cross right they would they would draw the pinky and the thumb together so that they could drive the nail without breaking any bones, right, which is scriptural, through the, the wrist of the, the person to come out the back of the wrist bone uh, and affix them to the cross. Like, it, it, it was incredible. You know, Brian uses this word excruciating. Mm. It, it, and, then he, and then he immediately says, <laughs> it's, it's miraculously perfect, he says, by the way, the word excruciating in Latin mm. means from the cross. From the cross, right. Yeah. From the yeah. cross. Wow. Right. So when you think about how painful this was, what we're using as the standard in our English language for excruciating pain is from the cross kind of pain. It's, you know? not, it's not just a wound in, in the wrist, but there's tr- tremendous nerves that go through that area. But they did that so that the, the nail just wouldn't slip through the hand and... And the and and the person fall off. They put it there so that it would stay on. The exactly. Human. But it would still look like the nail was through their hands. You know, it would still look like the nail yeah. was through their hands, but it was coming out at the most painful point. Mm-hmm. And then the feet, like they they knew the science of how to create excruciating pain. And mm-hmm. and Jesus has these wounds. The other thing that's you know. Uh, I, I think which points to the authenticity of the shroud is the fact that there is evidence that there was a crown of thorns on on yes. this man's head. Yeah, you see that in that in that statue that's based on the shroud. Yeah, yeah. really dramatic. 
Yeah. So when you look at that, when you see a crown of thorns, how many how many others were None. crowned crowned with thorns when they were crucified? They were only he was only given that because he uh, he was um, said to, they called him the, the what they put on the cross that he's the king of the Jews. Um, right. That was his 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 act of treason, I guess they said. But yeah, and then also the scourging, the wounds from the scourging. Yeah, you see that evidenced. Oh yeah, two hundred and twenty something. I you know watched the film for the exact number, but they're like two hundred and twenty uh, different uh, wounds on the front of the body, another hundred and, and something the, on the back. And this isn't this isn't a wound that is uh, like a whip. This has it's like a cat of nine tails. It has chunks of metal or pieces of glass embedded in the ends of in in the in the ends of the ropes um, and and so every time jesus was whipped flesh i guess we think about the uh, passion of the christ we see that more we understand it more now what it what it is but the price that jesus paid you know and and think about it it's it's our sins that put him there mm. you know we see well, how would the father send his son to the cross actually we did because he came to take on our humanity and to raise our dignity. But when he took on our humanity in that cosmic way, he took on us. And what was there was our sin. And you see, and, you, and, and, and the outright rebellion towards God. And you see that, you see that on the cross. But Jesus, when Jesus at the cross, he's, I think of him like a, 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 a weightlifter that's doing a, I guess it's a, a clean and jerk. I guess you, you bend over, pick up the weight put it on your chest and then you and then you lift it over your your head in a military press that's what he was doing he was lifting us up in that with his like his arms extended on the cross like that like a military press raising our dignity back to the place you know uh that we were called to be as the children of god made in god's image yeah it's it's amazing it, it truly is miraculous and i think that that's the the thing that i want to leave in the film with absolutely everybody is that this is a miraculous cloth and it is those who study it like Brian and like Richard it draws them in to a deeper faith uh, Brian uses this great line and it's in our trailer he says you know science truly followed and faith truly followed blend to reveal the truth mm -hmm. and the truth is on that cloth that's yeah, what that I, I like says. what uh, the magic center's i think motto is who talks a lot about the shroud of turn also magicenter.com it's the intersection of faith and reason they have mm -hmm. to go hand in hand we're talking with bill snyder the director and uh, filmmaker for uh, who 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 do men who do you say that i am a new film about the shroud of turn where can they find you bill very simply, patchworkheart.org. Patchworkheart.org. This is Bear Wozniak. We'll be back with more of the Bear Wozniak adventure. People love our EWTN TV show, Long Ride Home with Bear Wozniak. Thanks to you, the show has won four different tally awards. And now, instead of waiting each week for the next episode to air, you can actually binge watch our show and even share it with your friends when you go to deepadventure.com and join the mama bears or the man cave. Along with all the other benefits, you get total access to all the seasons of our aired episodes, plus instant access to episodes that won't even air for several months. Long Ride Home with Bear Wastick, a great way to communicate the gospel in a gritty enough way that even tough men will stop and watch at deepadventure.com. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to notredamefcu.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. When you go to the Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure YouTube channel, you get access to all of our free playlists, including hundreds of episodes of the Bear Wozniak adventure, plus the three-year journey through the whole catechism 
in our Ocean Sunrise Catechism series. And you even get short clips and live streaming of Baron Cindy's Adventures in Paradise videos. Go to YouTube and subscribe to the Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure channel. Are you still listening? I thought we warned you to change to an easy listening station. Well, you asked for it. Here is more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Aloha, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak. We want to remind everyone, go to our website, deepadventure.com, and click on, click on the little box that says, I think it's, it's called our store, if you want books and gear. We have so many great things in our, in our website, uh, including books by my, my books as well as other people's uh, books. So we invite you to go there to, uh, to deepadventure.com and kick around in there and find out more about our ministry. We're talking with Bill Snyder. Uh, Bill, your, your name of your ministry is patchworkheart.org. Um, to you, as an infant, you had a, you, 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 I mean, you were born with a, with a, with a heart issue. What was that? So I had a tetralogy of Fallot, uh, which is a congenital heart defect. And they literally needed to sew patches into my heart at three weeks old to uh, saved my life. So I've had three open heart surgeries since then, um, including that one. And I'm here at, I'm here at 37 or going on 38. Um, and yeah, so that's, that's how the ministry got its name. And I truly live my life with a patchwork heart every day. And, and tell us about what that means to you in terms of your relationship with God. Just the, the term patchwork heart has a lot more meaning than just about your, your, I mean, packed with meaning about what you went through medically but what does it really mean to you in your heart yeah your well you know spiritual heart <laughs> yeah absolutely you know i think well first of all those are things are so closely connected right but it's really easy for me to look down at my chest and see a 12 inch scar every day you know i shower every day it's like okay there's this 12 inch scar uh but oh, there's so many people out there in the world that are that are broken and they don't recognize that they have wounds everybody has a hole in their heart it's a god-sized hole that only he can fill Right. I mean, I still have God sized holes that only he can fill. Right. That 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 we need to, you know, rely and trust in him for, you know, for him to come in as a divine physician and heal us. And so that's what my ministry really is all about. It's just about helping people recognize that in some way they have a broken heart because some people are just walking around, you know, attach these iPhones, staring down all day, numb to the world and numb to their own, you know, their own human condition. So I just try to blast them out of that, wake them up and say, hey, you know what? You're, you're wounded in some way. What is it? And then allow the divine physician to come and heal that heart. Heal it. Uh, because he's the only one that can do it. You know, uh, you know the surgeons that, you know, repaired my heart, uh, you know, I... I reflect on that quite a bit, but my heart was completely stopped, right? They opened it up, they, they, they stopped it on the operating table, and they restarted it, right? Let, let me tell you, that's scary when you think about it, like, you know, for more than five seconds, like, hey, they're going to do this. Well, look at, look at what's going on in our, in our world today. Sometimes we need to have our heart stopped, you know, and, and readjusted by the divine physician. So uh, for, for me, that's what this ministry is all about, uh, and it's about helping people recognize that, realize that, and then you know, move forward, empowered by the Holy Spirit, to go out and be divine physician assistants. You know, that's what I like to say I am. I'm just a divine physician assistant, man, just pointing people to the one who can heal. And let this, let this uh, transfusion of God's love, of uh, the A and B type blood that we find on the Shroud of Turin, uh, you know, wash our sins away, and then and then and then vital give us vitality again. You know, I was thinking about this. We're editing our show Long Ride Home right now, uh, the Hawaii version. And in one of the rides, Bill, we we take a ride up to a, the top of a the volcano here in in Hawaii, in the, not the Big Island, in the island of Oahu, on a mountain that's called Tantalus. Now that wasn't mm -hmm. always its name, um, but students at Punahou School in the 1840s tried to climb that hill. And they failed. It was just out of reach. 
And, uh, and so we took this ride up Tantalus on our motorcycles. Grady Daiku is a, a member of the pack. He's probably ridden over a million miles on his motorcycle. He's our, he's our, our, he rides sweet for us. He watches out for everybody. He rides behind everybody, watches out for everybody. He said it was the most dangerous ride he's ever been on. Uh, well, going up Tantalus, the, the word Tantalus comes from a mythological character who uh, actually did something horrific to his son. And he, his punishment was to be in a pond with low-hanging fruit above him. But whenever he would reach for the fruit, the fruit would just blow away. He couldn't reach it. And he wouldn't dip down to drink. The, the water would recede. So that's where we get the word tantalizing. We're having a word, word school today. Um, and, but for a lot of people, Bill, because of what they've been through, maybe in their life, a sense of betrayal by their father or their mother or things that have happened or things that didn't happen that should have happened for them, they feel that, that God is just out of reach too. That he's just he's just he's just beyond their reach, and they and they and they they don't even they don't want they don't even try to reach out to him, and and the key to that I think is 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 to get real with God. You know, it's just it's just to get real. If you want God to be real to you, you got to get real with him. And this guy here, Bill Snyder, I I've been with him in in uh, on a, on a long ride home. He gets real with God. He really does. God to him is right next to him every moment of of his life. But if you, if you feel you, you want this experience of intimacy with God, of feeling God touch you, then get real with him. You say, God, you know what? I'm mad at you. You know, you, you, you blew it. I remember once I was pedaling my bicycle across the United States. I was somewhere in the desert of Arizona at the time. And it was in the middle of the night. And I just remember tears streaming down my face. And I just started, something happened. And I just started saying these really strange, these words to God, I forgive you. I was forgiving God because I had bitterness against him. You let me down. It's not the way life isn't supposed to be like this. You're an infant. How old were you for your first surgery? Three weeks old. May Three 3rd. weeks old. So why is it like this? For So what would you say to those people right now that feel like they need, they need to get real with God? They need to have a, re, a dangerous prayer with God. Maybe you can yeah. talk to them and actually lead them in that prayer of just getting real with God. Sure, absolutely. Uh, number one, I would I would tell you, talk to him like he is sitting in the room with you. Uh, remember that he is your friend because he called you a friend, right? If you're a disciple of Jesus, he said, "I, you know, I, you are my friends." You know, and that's really important. Uh, the other the other piece of that is, you know, if 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 you do what you I, I command you, right? Mm. And my command is that you love one another. So mm. that's so that's really important to remember. But um, think think about that. Uh, he's right there with you. Barry, Barry, you said it perfect. Like he's right there beside you. Uh, he's never leaving you. You know, in the in the Catholic Church, we believe that when we you body, blood, soul, and divinity, he wants to become part of you. Like you mm -hmm. know, God desires to be become part of you because he sees something inside of you that is good right uh because he created you good he did not create you bad mm -hmm. do you have sinful inclinations absolutely uh, but you were created good so um talk to him like like you know he created you to be good and that and that he is your friend well will you um, lead, will, will you uh we have just yeah. a minute pray that yeah. prayer with them right now lead them in a prayer those that are absolutely those, yeah so uh, Lord, we come before you right now, wherever uh, there is hurting in our hearts, wherever there is a wound that we do not uh, perceive, or maybe we perceive it, shine your light in there. Lord, we just ask you to give us your perspective for, for our lives and for the lives of those around us. Strengthen our relationships, especially those who are in our family, um, and allow us to see with the eyes of your Spirit mm -hmm. into the hearts of others. Mm -hmm. We ask all of these things through the intercession of your Blessed Mother mm -hmm. and entrusting them to your Sacred Heart. 
You know, Bill, there's a um, there's mountains here we we hike up in, uh, going up the volcano, and it's up in the rain area, the Rainbow Belt area up there, and the ro- and it's very slippery with cliffs falling on either side. It's muddy. Some places there's ropes you can pull, help pull yourself up, or there's roots you hang onto. But imagine falling off the side of one of those 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 hiking trails and hanging on by a root, and hanging on for dear life and saying, God, help me. <laughs> Some people feel like they're at the end of the rope, that that's where they're hanging. And then you hear Jesus say, I got you. Just let go. Everything's going to be okay. I got you. And I think for some people right now, the Lord's word to you is just let go and let God in. We've been talking with Bill Snyder from PatchworkHeart.org. His new movie movie is? Who do you say I am? About the Shroud of Turin. we got to go. We're out of time. Are you going to do shout out the Aloha with me, Bill? Oh, sure. May the breath of the Holy Spirit aloha you. Aloha. (laughs) Thanks for listening to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Find more manly conversation at the Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure YouTube channel. Subscribe and ring the bell. 